You're listening to Mechanic.com.au podcast, Australia's number one podcast for automotive service and repair professionals. This week's podcast is proudly brought to you by DBA, Disc Brakes Australia, stopping the world. I'm your host, Jason O, and today we're joined by Tony Doyle, who is the Technical Service Manager for DBA. Tony, welcome to the podcast today. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure uh, to be talking to the listeners of mechanic.com.au. Absolutely. Well, let's tell us a little bit about you, Tony. What's brought you to this industry? How did, how did you find your way to the DBA brand? Uh, to be honest with you, I've been a, a tragic automotive career uh, person. Yeah. Uh, I sold spare parts in the past, moved to a manufacturer, uh, then uh, came into the world of DBA about three and a half years ago. So, uh, Funny how it works, isn't it? My, I'm an older chap, and I've been in the industry a long time and seen a lot of change, but it's been all good. Oh, b- birds of a feather flock together, mate. And, and let's yeah. talk about, you said you're a bit of an older older guy. Car-wise, what, what have you got in the garage? Any projects kicking around that we should know about? Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've got a, uh, a, le- a 1942 left-hand drive Willys Jeep. Whoa, uh, here we go. And uh, probably one of those things which is looking forward to uh, – Days of uh, days on the road at the moment. It's immobile, but it, but it, yeah. it'll get there one day. And I, I've got a um, a VL Group A Commodore. Oh, uh, now you're showing off, Tony. Now you're showing off. Yeah. Wow. I, I bought it when they were very cheap, so don't worry. About it. <laughs> well, they're not cheap anymore. So a good investment from you. A cool sounding Jeep. A great job. Um, and and welcome to the show, anybody who's listening, wherever you may be, because today's topic is the future of aftermarket brake rotor technologies. Let's get straight into it. Now, Tony. Um, how does DBA see the regenerative brake and electrification of vehicles potentially maybe affecting the future of brake rotors and their technologies? Sure, great question. Uh, look, DBA currently supplies aftermarket rotor products for Tesla and other electrified yep. platforms in Australia and also export markets for DBA. But with regen braking, as we qualify it, this system can contribute up to 35% of the braking function in some vehicles. Um, this will increase the life cycle of brake components, we believe. Right. And locally, as a quick example, if you take hybrid applications as the first form of electrification, we already understand Toyota hybrid Camry taxis may see up to 200,000 kilometre service intervals for brakes. Yeah, right. Some taxi operators may have seen as low as 40,000 kilometres for Ford Falcon LPG taxis in the, in the 90s, depending on who drove the vehicle. So the braking system technology aligns the extended service life intervals. That's outstanding. That's, that's yeah. brilliant. Well, look, the regen braking technology advancements uh, affect the mechanic or the end user in the financial sense. Will it, will it affect them down the line? Well, we believe some of, the in, some of the increased life cycle of the brakes will be offset by technologies such as anti-collision, yes. um, automatic emergency braking, collision mitigation braking systems, where the braking applications will be automated to avoid collision. So there'll be more braking applications that are autonomous to the vehicle uh, driver. Um, we saw similar increase in disc wear from stability control systems in modern vehicles when they first came out. However, no major change in costs occurred um, at that time, and for the foreseeable future, we don't believe this will be the case. Yeah, right. Okay, go however, ahead. however, sorry, for, for the braking systems, uh, they will become more complex, so the mechanic will have increased labour units and brake components replaced to a greater degree of complexity, apart from yeah. rotors, sensors, and, and the regen energy collection modules, etc. We've seen some of the, uh, the autonomous vehicles and so forth, and we've all seen displays on, 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 on you know, TV and video and so forth, and, and they seem to be getting better and better with the way they handle things. But I have seen myself a lot of, it's either all or nothing in regards to their brakes. In, in the emergency situations, they are slamming them on really hard. Do you think that that autonomous use and that, that, you know, the sensors and so forth are going to push the brakes a little bit tougher than what a human would? Yes, yes, yes. The, the examples are, yes, that the, the systems will be functioning to a higher degree of capacity yeah. um, with, with autonomy for all the right reasons, of course. Okay, well, look, let's talk about where do BDA draw their inspiration in terms of new technologies for developing the aftermarket? Well, primarily it's OE technology that we're evaluating yes. um, and, and applications with specialisation of design to suit the aftermarket environment or problem-solving technology as required. Uh, four-wheel drive SUV or performance applications are, are primary in mind for this. 
and technology insights are also drawn from participation in things like society of automotive engineering, seminars, yeah. conferences, etc. Motorsport has played a great source of technology for many decades. However, the focus has changed a little in this game. It has, isn't it? It has. I mean, the regen braking is really the new ground for you guys. Pulling power and pulling pulling energy systems out of braking was the stuff of sci-fi five years ago. Now, now it's a it's a reality. It's happening. Yes, indeed. indeed. Well, look, are there any new developments in the road of technology that are being explored in house at DBA? You can tell us about any special projects you'd like to to to, to you know shed some light on. Well, yeah, yes and no. There, there are some. <laughs> if we patents. twist your arm, can we twist your arm? <laughs> you can. You can look. <laughs> DBA has some patents filed on new designs recently, um, which we would look forward to talking to in the 2020 period with with the listeners of mechanic.com.au. Yep. Are these coming directly from from OEM manufacturer requirements, or or is this is this solely sourced by you guys? Uh, it, it's a combination of both. Yep. Um, obviously, from DBA's point of view, to look at the OE specification is is the starting point, but where we can improve upon. Um, you might say the OE specification with reference to how the vehicle's been specifically lo- used in, in the local market um, yeah. is, a, is a primary focus for DBA and has been for many years. Um, in regards to um, the development side of things, are you are you pulling that information back from feedback from workshops or is, is this just independently sourced by you? Uh, it, it's a combination of inputs. We we, we have a highly mobilised uh, sales force who are in the field talking to our yep. distributors, uh, our installers, our end users, and, and also working with inputs from overseas as well as the local market on, on, on these type of technology aspects. Okay. We see all sorts of innovative product projects you know, across the industry. doesn't matter really what sort of part you're putting into a car. Brakes is no difference. Um, DBA is obviously at the forefront of this. What what sort of changes do you see coming in the future in regards to automotive technology? Do, do you see any mainstream changes from, you know, four brakes, one at each corner of the car? Uh, we, we do believe that our friction-style braking with regen capability will be something we'll see for quite some time. Um, unlike other systems, you, we may replace an, a, a piston engine uh, with, with an electric engine, but at the end of the day, we, we see some specialisation, like I've said, in how the vehicles are applied, particularly, yeah. say, the 4 by, four by 4 and SUV uh, recreational towing markets for Australia, they are, are particularly applicable to differences of technologies that make a vast improvement in the performance levels for the customer. And, and, and you know, Tony, we lead the world with the off-road and full drive, not only because of the size of this great country, but what we do with our off-roaders and, and so forth. And speaking of which, it's obviously a booming market at the moment, off-road 4 by 4 and recreational towing markets. You know, the application or benefit of upgraded slotted or, say, cross-drilled rotors, which are more a performance rotor, what, what do you think the application of that into that emerging market is at the moment? Sure. Well, for these applications, the average operating temperature of the brake system is much higher than a standard road vehicle. Yeah, okay. okay. So to enable effective and safe braking applications, careful consideration needs to be taken of the choice of rotors and, and also friction. Um, yeah, right. Slotted rotors are our most popular choice for Australian applications as they are more effective in maintaining a clean friction surface, uh, reducing the chance of glazing and overheating of the brakes. Cross-drilled rotors, which are very aesthetically appealing, aren't so popular in Australia for 4x4s, okay. but interestingly, they do excel in the Middle East where fine, free-flowing sand is more common and the holes allow the sand to evacuate effectively. Wow, Okay. So it's really a, a horses for courses and in, in, in one of better mode for rotors. And you were saying about the uh, the upgraded slotters. We'd obviously have a, a lot of heat dissipation with, you know, a heavy three-ton, you know, towing capacity and so forth. It would assist, obviously, especially in those frontal brake areas? Uh, correct, correct. Yeah, look, depending on the vehicle type, but a, a lot of the balance in braking is on the front axle as opposed to the rear. Yep. Um, and look, in some recent campaigns for DBA, uh, the 4x4 market, with, with the addition of a bull bar, uh, side steps, a roof rack, some uh, yeah. water tanks and extra gear, um, without, without too much challenge, you can add up to 1,000 kilos pretty quickly <laughs> to, to the base GVM. Kids, of the dogs, canoes, everything else in between, yeah? Yeah, you name it. Uh, well, let's move on to commercial fleets um, because those that cover a lot of miles every year you know, the benefit from an upgrade in vehicle braking performance when there's no 
real traditional performance driving involved. Does, is that applicable? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Look, we focus on the commercial fleets under 3,500 kilogram, um, right. and they can benefit uh, from a braking system upgrade um, when considering safety. Um, as with 4x4s, commercial, free, commercial fleets, the braking temperatures are typically higher. Right. With a fully laden vehicle and require appropriate selection of brake components. Okay. Um, improvement in both rotors uh, and, and friction materials can improve braking system thermal capacity, uh, which also leads to the effective brake torque and the performance levels and also offer the fleet user a, a valuable cost versus performance ratio increase in yeah. braking. Right, okay. And, and you know, just on that, we talk about the commercial, we talk about the 4x4, four four, and one, one topic I love to bring up with most of our podcasters is obviously the classic vehicle side of things. You have quite an extensive range um, of, of different opportunities for classic vehicle people to upgrade their rotors as well, haven't you? We do, we do. Look, uh, the, the first mainstream brake rotor for DBA was DBA001, which fitted the HDHR Holden. Um, we still offer that as a, as a standard replacement rotor, but right. we also offer it in slotted, uh, we offer it in cross-drilled to, to also entertain the enthusiast markets, which yeah. are still very buoyant in, in the Australian marketplace. Yeah, well, well, there is, and more and more people are getting into the older vehicles, the off-road, the full driving. So you're just expanding into markets that are quite popular. I guess from a, a workshop point of view, our mechanics and our, and our business owners are encountering people who have got problems that need to be solved. And, and it sounds like DBA are coming up with a range of solutions, no matter the driving style. Now, uh, what, what do you find are some of the misconceptions or the, uh, the knowledge gaps in the market when it comes to, say, things like um, you know, what, rotor warranty claims and, and knowledge and understanding? Sure. This is an in-depth question, this one. But um, we have an internal term called Dr. Google. <laughs> and the misuse of terminology yeah. um, that can make the task of diagnosing a fault more difficult. Um, we do have a growing DIY landscape, it, yep. it would appear at this time. Um, the frequency of technical inquiries has grown due to, in some cases, uh, end users not following the correct process of road fitment and even poor quality selection of components to the application. Okay. Whilst uh, fitting brakes can be relatively simple, the quality of work done is reflected in the warranty claims more so than the quality of the component we find. And okay. we, we recommend at all times brakes us as safety critical items should always be fitted by qualified mechanic.com members. Um, DBA spends a great deal of time and energy on education and technical bulletins on our website, uh, www.dba.com.au and our tech zone pages. Um, we focus on all aspects of brake rotor technology, rotor fitment, and even the influence of, of friction material, brake pads in these yeah. cases. And ju just a quick example, just, just the other day, a customer contacted DBA to state the rotors would not fit to one side of the car uh, <laughs> okay. and not the other. Yet, yet both rotors fitted the same side of the car correctly. Now, in talking with the customer and talking it through and a couple of calls backwards and forwards, the root cause was that the customer had incorrectly packed the slide pin boots with that much grease that it wouldn't allow the caliper to retract properly. Wow. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay. And then another thing we will just mention, tyre fitters. Um, mechanics torque wheel nuts to precise tolerances using torque sticks and torque wrenches. We know this and all the listeners do that. Tyre fitters work in a term we call dugger dugger. And uh, yep. dugger dugger is the noise made with an air yes. rattle gun <laughs> we, which is causing us issues with uh, disc thickness variation or judder through the brake pedal when the, the over-torque um, over of wheel nuts is causing brake rotors and hubs um, to, to create excess uh, lateral runout, which, which is a growing issue. Yeah, right. Okay, that's a very, very interesting point. Um, I, I guess there was a technology change um, where we went from those disc rotor uh, wheel bearing all-in-one hubs, as we would call them, and the efficiency of manufacturing allowed the, the disc rotor to be a separate item to the hub, which is what we call a slip-on, slip-off. We're seeing a lot more vehicles in that space, and that probably pays credence to what you were saying regarding the DIY market. Is that right? Uh, true, true, yeah. We, we Dr. Google and on board, people in certain circumstances are, are more willing to have a look, a look at the hat-type rotor, as we call it. However, the fitment technique is still very specialised. You've got to ensure cleanliness of the hub where you're taking the rotor off, which may have been on for quite some years. Uh, and, and again, the installation 
procedure, looking at the, as mechanics do, looking at the components that come off the car to see if there's any mechanical variation that may need to be addressed. Right. Um, look, we still do have some hub-type rotors on the rear of some small cars, uh, European cars. Uh, sometimes we'll have hub rotors, but, but you're right. Uh, overall, the hat-type rotor has given, you might say, the duo wires a, a new influence in having a look at brakes themselves, which... which well, uh, yeah, some issues. You, you always want people to, you know, obviously get involved with their car, especially if they're enthusiasts. But from obviously from a daily driving reliability point of view, always look for a mechanic. dot com. dot you know, approved repairer is always a good place to be. Um, and just finally, one of the last things, am I right? And I got this as some late mail. You've got an offer for people who are listening to the podcast. Is that right? We do indeed. We oh, do you're indeed. a nice DBA guy. DBA would uh, like to extend to the listeners uh, of mechanic.com.au a, a special offer, and it's limited to our listeners. But the listeners of this podcast, for the first four callers who phone DBA on 1800 730 039, ask for Josephine, that's Josephine, and say, I love DBA. These four callers, listeners, will receive a free pair of DBA Street Series T2 slotted rotors with a retail value of $350. Tony, Tony, can you and I make that phone call? We'll add up quickly and then there's only two spots left. Uh, Jason, this offer is limited <laughs> to uh, non-employees, <laughs> friends and family of the business, okay? Well, that's an awesome offer. I'll tell you what, whoever's listening to this, jump on the phone right now, get across to Josephine straight away and grab yourself some rotors. That's a brilliant opportunity. And, uh, you know, look, thanks very much for, for coming on the show and chatting with us today, Tony. Did you enjoy it? I did. A pleasure. I look forward to the next time we'll get together. Uh, well, or, or if our listeners have any follow-up questions or anything they've discussed today, they, they can go and head to reach out to DBA via the mechanic.com.au community. And now, if you're not already a member of mechanic.com.au and join thousands of other mechanics around Australia who are earning more, learning more, networking more at mechanic.com.au, online home of Australia Mechanics, by creating a free account today. Well, look, thanks for tuning in to the number one podcast of Australia, courtesy of mechanic.com.au. If you want to unlock a whole host of trade-only resources, including our private community, competition, education contents, job opportunities, training, troubleshooting, and much, much more, go ahead and create a free account at mechanic.com.au. Thanks for listening. Keep the spanners flying wherever you are, and we'll see you for the next podcast coming very soon.